Brining is a secret weapon everyone should know. Let's find out how easy it is to create one. Hi, good morning, back again. Today we're going to talk about something that I find very, very dear to me because I like to cook and I like to do everything I can to get the best results from it. And we're going to talk about brining this time because I use brine just about every time I'm, I'm doing um, smoked meats or if I'm roasting chicken, have holidays. It's definitely, I would highly recommend it for, for turkey. Brining serves two purposes. First, the salt and brine breaks down the proteins in meat. So if you have a cut of meat like a pork chop or a turkey breast or a chicken breast, something that's prone to get dry if you let it overcook, brining is going to make all the difference because what it does, while the salt, you may think it's pulling the moisture out, but actually what it's helping do is break down the proteins and put moisture back into your meat. So brining serves kind of a dual purpose for you to really come out with a very tender result. If you give it a try, I think you'll be very pleased with it. And the other thing that's great about brining is that when you're using the liquid brine, while it's pulling out the, while the salt is getting in there and working on the meat, it's also pulling the flavors of your brine into that meat. So for instance, if you're doing a Boston butt and you're smoking it, you're rubbing it down and you're putting all that flavor on the outside, you can use that same rub to flavor your brine and so it'll start pulling those flavors into the meat as well. You can use it to inject your brine while it's in there and, just in, and getting the flavor all the way inside of it. It's a technique I use. I've been very successful with it. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to walk you through how simple it is to make a brine, some tricks you can use to save time, and then we're going to show you what you want to do, what, some things you want to think about after you've completed your brine. So um, we're going to do a one that I use kind of a universal a standard universal brine that i take it's just a combination of sugar salt and then whatever aromatics i stick to some of the basics rosemary thyme and sage uh, a few black peppercorns sometimes i throw in some smashed juniper berries and when it comes to um, poultry or pork i like to use apple juice as well a little bit of apple juice in there to impart that extra bit of flavor you're going to use this combination you can use it for just about any sort of poultry or pork that you're brining. It's very simple, but it's going to give you a lot of extra flavor. One other thing you want to add in there is a bay leaf. I, um, you want to also use a bay leaf. I just use one or two bay leaves in there. Bay leaves are like this very, very closely kept secret that everybody knows about. Bay leaves impart a ton of flavor in your food. So make sure you always have a couple of bay leaves in there as well. And if you're wondering about how much salt to use, as a general rule, all you really need is about one cup of salt to every gallon of brine. Depending on how much meat you're talking about brining, you really only need about a half cup if you're doing a couple of quarts. I generally make between two quarts and a gallon, and that's all that's necessary for most of my cooking. If I end up doing something more like a, a large bird or if I'm doing a large quantity of meat, I just double the recipe. You can take this recipe, you can increase it or decrease it depending on what you need. The other thing you want to remember about brines is after you get the, the general liquid together, the brine has to be submerged. So you want the brine to stay underneath the liquid so that it can do what it needs to do. So if you take it, you can put it in, if it's small cuts of meat, you can use a Ziploc bag. Just, you know, let the air out and use a Ziploc bag. If you're using a large bird, I like to use a brining bucket there you can get them on amazon or um, local smoke shop i'll put a link down below for you a brining bucket is great because it'll give you everything you need to keep that keep the meat submerged in there for the entire amount of time and how long you need to brine is the next thing you want to think about small cuts of meat really a couple of hours is about all you need you don't want to do it too long because while the salt's breaking down that protein if you take something like a chicken breast and you brine it overnight, it'll probably break it down too much and you end up with a texture that you wouldn't want. 
So if it's an already pre-cut piece of meat, a couple of hours is usually more than enough. But if you're doing something like a whole bird, I usually do a chicken at least overnight to 24 hours, sometimes a couple of days. Turkey, definitely. I try to go for one or two days. Two days will be ideal for me only because I really want that brine to take its time and really do everything it can to penetrate in the flavor. I've had a lot of success that way. So as long as you're not using too much salt, you're not going to ruin it. And that's another thing people tell you, it'll get salty and all these other things. That really doesn't happen if you don't go crazy. A cup of salt, gallon of water, that's all you need to do. So what we'll do, we're going to take these ingredients. We are going to get them into a pot of water. If I'm making, say for example, two quarts of brine, I'm only going to use a quart of water. All you really want the water for is to dissolve the salt, dissolve the sugar, and then get it to start releasing the oils. You're going to use fresh herbs. Do not use dried herbs. You want fresh herbs. You don't have to chop them up. You don't have to do much of anything with them, except put them in that boiling water. And once it gets to boil, turn it off or just put it on a very low simmer and just give it about 10 minutes. Let these oils start to release themselves into the water. Once that's done, your brine is pretty much ready. At that point, all you're doing is just thinning it out with the remaining water. I like to use ice water. That chills it because you do not want to put your raw meat into warm water. You want it to be very cool. You typically want to chill it below 40 degrees for safety reasons, food safety. A cup of ice water, two cups of ice water, or if you're making a gallon, two quarts of ice water to the quarter to a brine just to get it up to the volume you need. It cools it off quickly and you don't have to spend the next hour or two waiting for the brine to come to room temperature. So what we're gonna do, put this in some water, get it to a boil, turn it off, I'm gonna let it sit, and then my brine is ready. That is it. Brining is very easy, but it's gonna give you amazing results. If you haven't tried it, my friends always ask me what is the one thing I love to do, and I'll tell them the same thing. I brine. I love to brine. I always like to brine. And if you didn't catch that, I like to brine. So if you're not sure, trust me, I wouldn't say it if I didn't believe it. You're going to get great, great results. So give it a try. I'll let you see the video of me just going through this. But other than that, you got the holidays coming up if it's, if it's around Thanksgiving. Remember, if you're buying a frozen turkey, you're going to have to give it time to defrost first before you put it in the brine. So if you're talking about getting a, a turkey or if, it's, if you're planning it out, make sure the meat is already thawed. Get it, in, get it defrosted, get it in the brine, and then you start counting your couple days. Um, when you're ready to cook the meat, I typically recommend you take it out of that chilled brine and let it get up to room temperature before you start cooking it. Never like to cook cold with cold cuts of meat because it's going to give you an uneven cooking time and the outside is going to typically overcook or burn before the middle. So just another little holiday tip or everyday cooking tip for you. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this information. I have a recipe below with the ingredients that I'm using for this brine. I use it as my go-to for any kind of um, meat that I want to brine that's poultry or turkey. Sometimes I even use it in fish. But I can vary it any way I want. I can add lemon to it or garlic or any other flavor profiles that I might be using for that recipe. But this standard formula is universal. You can play with it however you want and have some fun with it. So have at it. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.